every time I want to participate in the Mightiest Governor to win some sculptures and unlock a commander, two new commanders drop, and this time the leadership commanders are out. Suleiman and Honda Civic, I mean Honda Tadakatsu. And um, in this video, we're going to go over these commanders, what my thoughts are, and uh, trying to understand what on earth Lilith are doing, because holy, what on earth is this? Just sit back, slap a like on the video, and let's go. Hey there, YouTube. Welcome back to Gecko Gaming. A couple of quick things for you guys before we start, because you do need to know this. Number one, today's stream, Wednesday stream, is going to be tomorrow, Liver Wars Thursday. And it is actually going to be a crazy story time stream because we are finally going to reveal what happened behind the scenes in 2070 that brought that kingdom to its knees and to oblivion. It's crazy. It's much more than I even knew. It is, I, w I had a hunch and turns out that my hunch was like a tenth of what was going on behind the scenes and we're getting some leadership from 2070 to tell the story from behind the scenes while we take shots and whatnot. So I hope to see you all in that stream. It is legit going to blow your minds because when I heard the story for the first time a little bit ago and that was after I left 2070, I was like, God damn, that's wild. The second thing is, I know you guys have missed me. Uh, I've been going through some crazy things in real life, positive things, not bad. But as a result, I'm just not finding myself uh, streaming or making videos as much. I do apologize for that. I'm going to make an extra effort to try to see how I can get you more content out. I appreciate those of you who are supporting us. And let's go. I know I've already rambled for two minutes, whatever. Anyway, Solomon and Honda Civic, which we'll get to next, are the new... Leadership Commanders in Rise of Kingdoms. We'll talk about Solomon first. The conquering, uh, leadership conquering attack boy. Um, well, not really a boy. He does have a mustache and he is from the Ottoman Empire, I guess. Magnificent Sultan is his active skill. A thousand rage generation uh, will get you here. Deals a direct damage factor of 900 all the way to 1300. Thank you, Norbs. When the target has less than 50% rage, decrease its, their defense by 10% and health by 10% for 2 seconds. All the way up to 30%. Now, here's here's what, what, what I don't get about this skill. We'll continue. But this already irks me, and I'll explain why in a second. Troops led by this commander gain 3% attack and 3% defense. Damage taken from all sources is reduced by 2% outside of a lion's territory. All that goes up to 15% attack bonus and defense bonus and 10% damage taken reduction from all sources, which is also a really interesting mechanic. These guys literally just dumped a bunch of new mechanics onto commanders and leadership, because why the heck not, right? Nobody's going to get them. Or are we? The passive skill, third passive skill, Siege of Vienna attacks have a 10% chance to reduce a normal attack damage targets. Troops by 5%, their skill damage by 5% for the next three seconds when attacking cities or strongholds. Cooldown, five seconds. Okay, so you, I guess you gotta hit a building in order to decrease this normal damage of the building and the normal damage and the skill damage of the building. That's okay. Janissary, troops led by this commander, deals 1% increased normal attack damage all the way up to 5%. If at least two different unit types are present, troops gain 20% increased skill damage for three seconds upon suffering skill damage themselves all the way up to 50% skill damage increase. Boom. Okay. Anyway, cool down five seconds. Master of Europe, a new skill as your your expertise passive skill as well. When the commander has over 70% rage, normal attack by troops led by this commander inflict an additional skill damage 200 and but grant their target an extra 50 rage. All right. Let's talk about this commander real quick because he's all sorts of wild of stuff that we've never seen in any other commanders in any other kind of like constellation and these guys are like, yeah, let's just dump three different new types of skill mechanics into this one dude, which we're going to put in a Mightiest Governor, which is an infantry Mightiest Governor coming up, mind you. Thank you, Lilith. We appreciate that. There's none of us out there who needs Zenobias like crazy, Pakals like crazy, which are the meta nowadays for rallies and garrisons. So lovely of you guys to drop this during an infantry Mightiest Governor, by the way. But if we're talking about this, first of all, if the target has less than 50% rage, how on earth, like, 
if we kind of knew how much rage was on the opposite side, it would make maybe a little bit more sense. But like, how can we truly, how can I know when I am hitting, when this skill is, is being triggered, whether it's working or not, I will see the reductions and whatever the heck not, but Lilith introduced a skill that has a mechanic in it with a number and a percent of a mechanic that we have no access to. So 50% of rage, what truly tells me that this, that there is 50% rage or there isn't, I don't like when Lilith introduced mechanics that have components in them that are completely unclear for us. We know how much attack certain marches have, which therefore, because of we know what type of troops they are. And therefore, based on the commander's skills and the command and the equipment, which we don't know what our enemy's equipment is, but we do know what the overall buffs of that equipment is through the battle logs. We can calculate and know exactly how much attack, how much damage, how much health the opposition has. And based on that, do a bunch of different math, right? But there is nothing that indicates rage. And that is a huge problem. There is a four ball indicator for you as your own march, but you can't see the opposition. I'm not a fan. But I'm not going to keep drilling you guys with this because this video is going to get way too long for that. Troops led by this commander have a 3% chance to attack, yada, yada, yada. Damage taken from all sources. Again, we go back to this thing which never happened before. All sources doesn't necessarily only mean attack and counter attack. It also means AOE. Yeah, that's right. Think about it for a second. Normal attack, de uh, normal attack decrease, counter attack decreases means that when you are getting hit by something, getting swarmed or getting or attacking or getting attacked by it, it's a uh, the decrease was a one on one type of thing, or a multiple to one type of thing. Now, like you can, uh, someone else's AOE will legitimately take less, do less damage to this dude, up to ten percent, which is. A new thing that Lilith introduced yet again on a commander that I don't really know whether he's going to be worth the time. We have seen plenty of revolutionary leadership commanders that have found nothing whatsoever of a use on Earth. Unless you want to peacekeep with a mightiest governor commander. Which, funny enough, we have one sculpture of, I mean, I guess. I don't even know when we got that sculpture for the record. I guess I did something or there was KVK or I don't know whenever this was going. Anyway. Back to Solomon. Another weird like mechanic that they're adding, which is cool. I like this one a lot, but why on this commander, man? Like, I can already see this line right here being a very popular line coming in the future, either as skills and or as equipment as well, which would be really, really, really nutty. Mark my words. I'm not always right, but maybe a little bit. Anyway. Next skill, attacks have a 10% chance of reducing normal attack damage taken by the troop by 5% and their skill damage of 5% for 3 seconds. This, we've seen before, this makes sense, except that when this one you attack a stronghold, which sucks a little bit. This is actually very good when you have someone whose garrison is uh, is a an archer garrison per se, because a lot more skill damage. Cavalry Garrison also has some skill damage involved in it. Really, this is very good for sieging cities. I can almost see this guy showing up as a secondary for siege city sieges over our friend Mehmed, who really is the city sieger per se. That's really the, the one thing he's good at. And a lot of people who hit cities hit it with this. And uh, this is not necessarily the worst thing on earth. But again, Solomon, what on earth are we doing with you? Finally, troops led by the commander deal one increased one percent increased normal dam attack damage all the way up to five percent. If at least two different types of units are present, troops also gain twenty percent increased skill damage for three seconds upon suffering skill damage. This is kind of weird too. This is also new that upon suffering skill damage, you deal more skill damage because now you kind of have to figure out how. And this is for three seconds, right? So. You need to figure out how you make make sure your opposition procs ahead of you so you get this bonus. If you proc your skills before your enemy does, this is useless. Yes, the normal attack damage bonus, true. But the second part is useless. How are you going to deal skill skill damage when there's no you're at zero rage because he procced right two rounds after you and you're still four rounds to go and that's four seconds and poof, it goes. 
all of a sudden, this is not looking too good. And to make things even worse, when the commander has over 70% rage, again, again, yeah, I guess this time I can look at the freaking little circles. And when I see more than three circles, I guess we got more than 70%. But again, we are going back to rage percentages, which I don't like. I'm a, not a fan of the fact that we don't know what our rage count is. And so in theory, yes, John Wick did all the math about the rage and how much you can earn every single round and all that. But realistically, we never know how much rage we're actually holding. And so that's why John had to do all that math, because if we did know how much rage we're holding, we would have been able to make all these deductions without having to do the wild, wild work he did to figure that one out. And so to make this even worse, you're helping your opposition gain rage. So if you hit, if your opposition hits the max 220, which John has calculated, and then John also brought to life the fact that the debuff, the decreases of rage happen after you hit that 220. So if you regen, if you got 300 uh, rage, essentially you only gain 220 and then the debuffs are reduced out of it. So does this mean that now the person earned 220 and then let's say because of three silent trials, they lost 60 and then they'll also regain 50. When does this extra rage regeneration come in place in the rage mechanics? I think that this commander is going to take John back down the rabbit hole of, of rage because it changes rage in a very, very interesting way. I really think that this commander is going to be a little bit iffy. I'm hearing people who are like, this could be really good. I'm hearing people saying this could be really bad. I'm on the fence as to whether I like him or not. Because on the one hand, there is a very, 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 very good 30% health and defense reduction. So long as you can somehow manage to time it in a meaningful way where you can get this to proc. Because... If you cannot get into a cycle, let's say you're swarming a rally or you are rallying a rally as a counter rally or any of these different little things, right? If you cannot get into a cycle where this procs, those 30% reductions, you're kind of screwed. And so my opinion on this commander, major skip for me. I want to get Pakal this coming my this governor. I guess I'm going to work really hard to get it on both accounts, I guess. But yeah, Solomon, my friend, unfortunately, I think you're a flop, but I might be completely wrong and you guys might be completely destroying me in the comments right now. I don't see a use for him. Do you? Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think about him. I wanted to talk about Honda too, but we're not going to make a 30 minute video talking about commanders. We'll just split up the videos and in the next video, we'll talk about Honda Civic because, I mean, I guess. I'm Gecko. I'm out of here. I appreciate everyone who dropped a like on this video. Hit that subscribe down below. Don't forget tomorrow, the downfall of 2070, the truth behind the scenes, the stuff that I didn't even know that if I had known, maybe things would have been different with those guys. Take care. Have a good one. Peace.